Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. They got to go out today, see if things came out today, see if things are on sale. Now today though, new release wise, there's actually not much releasing today. Pretty much the only big title which is coming out, which will be in stores, is the new Liam Neeson film, Honest Thief. Other than that though, I don't believe there's really going to be anything else. There might be one or two random things that are out, and there's also a couple things that I haven't seen in stores the past couple weeks like that Walmart hadn't put out, because you know, if you guys seen the videos for the last while, I go around. I've been to many Walmarts lately because a lot of the times they just don't have the movies out. So I have to kind of go around to a bunch of different ones to find which ones have the movies out. So there are still a few things too I haven't seen like from last week and even the week before. So maybe I'll see some of those today as well. But like I said, other than that though, I don't think in store wise there's really anything else big releasing today. There, Like I said, I might be wrong. There might be like a surprise or two in there. Like I said, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure Honest Thief is really the only really big thing today. But also though, at the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received a review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end. And as always, too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are reviewed, if you guys have seen them, uh, if, you guys, if you guys were fans of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. And today, though, I'm starting at Walmart first, and I'm also going to the Walmart la that last week had out the new stuff. I'm skipping the one that I always usually go to because like, I feel like it's just been so many weeks in a row with like nothing, you know, nothing changed out at all. And since though this week there's not a whole lot of things releasing either, I figured there was no point in checking there. I will be going there next week though. So maybe by next week there have like gotten a whole bunch of different stuff. I also want to mention too, for those who are wondering, like the reason if it seems like in the opening, I seem like more unshaved and stuff. I won't be shaving at all until after January 13th because there's a movie that I'm doing on the 13th of January that's a Western film, and they sent a thing out that said, don't shave for it. So, and they said, like, if you do shave, leave at least, like, five days of, like, growth. But, like, with me, it doesn't grow in much within five days, and it's kind of, like, real nothing. So I figured i just, like, shake things up, and we'll go, like, a really long time. At, like, you know, pretty much it'll be, like, three weeks that I will have gone without shaving. So we'll see what it looks like by the end of it, though. But fingers crossed, though. Hopefully, though, they have uh, some of the new stuff out in here today, though. We'll see. I see some, like, the boxes and stuff like that here. A lot of times, like, the movies can sometimes be in those. So sometimes I, like, ask them. But let's see. Is there anything new at all here? No. I, I don't. I, I think they might not have put the new things in there. Because, well, they, technically, the only thing that would be new that I think would be here is Honest Thief. Because, you know, Tenant was last week. The Worth Grandpa. Uh, the Craft was last week. Let's just check on the side here, just to see if there's anything else different. But yeah, like, no, it's still like totally not a lot over here. But like I said, I don't think there would be too much changed out over here. I'll see if I can peek in the boxes that they're looking in over there to see if they have anything different. I don't know if we'll go to a different Walmart today or not, because I really don't know which one to go to, because they, I don't think there would be too much they would have anyway, as far as I can tell. But we'll, we'll see, like I said, I'll still peek in there. But this, this Walmart is interesting though because it really cut down the section because up until a couple months ago, it was movies like all the way down to there and there was even some on this side. So they've kind of cut this one down a lot to pretty much just right here and then, all, and then around and then they don't even have a lot of, they have like a, some movies here and then they have like this $5 bin here and then that's sort of it that they have. But they used to have a lot more in this particular one, but it's definitely, uh, cut down the section wise and everything though. Yeah, I asked the guy though over in the section and he was saying um, I said is there any boxes of new releases and there were some boxes down there that said the fifth so those ones but he's like oh other than that though he didn't see any new boxes today and I mentioned about Honest Thief which I feel like they would have I have to look online on the app when I you know go in the car and see but he said that he's like oh I don't even think they're gonna have that in here but I don't know I feel like that's definitely one that they would have had uh, but we'll see. I'll, like I said, I'll check online just to see if it's on there. And I don't know if I'll head to another Walmart or not. Because like I said, I don't really know which one I would go to. Because there's not a lot of other ones around here that I think would have anything out. Because the one I've been to like, is another one kind of like the other location. that hasn't changed things out in weeks though. Into Target we go. 
And in here though, like looking at the actual section though, I don't see anything new here at all. It's all the same stuff. And I actually, you know, I looked on the on the Walmart website as well. And it looked like though they said in stores for the Honest Thief. So it looks like they probably had it in there. I don't know for sure though. But, um, you know, on here though, I looked on Target's website and I looked up um, Honest Thief and it says not sold in stores. So I guess this week in Target, there's no new releases at all. So I don't think there's anything new at all in here. As far as I can tell, and I was just looking through just to see if anything random mixed in or anything new that I might not have seen in the past couple weeks. But no, didn't see anything in here different though. Because, you know, all the other stuff I've so shown recently, like Modern Family, this is an exclusive one, the complete series in here. Um, but other than that though, I don't see anything else new or different in here. I saw they had like some steelbooks still again, again, like for more Mortal um, Kombat Legends in here. In here, the Scorpions one. But yeah, like I said, don't really see anything else different or new in here though, as far as I can tell. In here though, they have a bunch of these like Back to the Future figures. And these are kind of funny ones. These are like Biff Tannen, like, but like these are him when he was in like the second one in the alternate reality one. So that's kind of funny in here, like this Doc Brown one. And they have a bunch of like random toys and stuff in here. Marty with that future Marty hat. But a whole bunch of different figures in here. I don't know what they cost. I think I think they might be ten dollars. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure, but they had a couple other Back to the Future ones. Like they had this one here too. It was kind of cool in here. Um, of you know Marty and they're like they're like super detailed, so like you can like change the head on them and stuff like that. There's also a Biff one that I've seen. I didn't see that one in here. There's like a Biff Tanner one, which is kind of cool. But this one comes with the the camera and the hoverboard, so that's pretty cool. Oh, this, no, not the hoverboard, the skateboards. This is the, for the first one, but that's definitely a very cool one. They had another one over here as well. This was the other one here that I saw of him in a space suit. So that was a pretty cool one here as well. And then they also have like some of these other ones with like these kind of goofy kind of looks to them, like kind of like the animated, like cartoon look ones there. Into the Valley Thrift we go. And this is the one I have not been in here in like, since like March, so we'll see what they've got. Like I said, it's been a long time. Yeah, but like I was saying though, it has been a really, really long time since I've been in here. Luckily enough, there's no one crowding over here in the movies or anything, so I can kind of look at this. And the way that it's kind of put out, you don't really have to touch everything. You can kind of just see them all from the top and everything for the most part. The only ones you can't see really well are these side ones. But like I said, yeah, it's been since like March or so since I was last in here. So it's been a really, really long time. The one time I came in here, there was like a, that I looked at it a couple months back, there was like a line of like 30 or 40 people to get in. So it was like, I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna stand in that thing. But we'll see if there's anything interesting in here or anything. Star of the Century. This is one, this came out again, got re-released again on DVD, but it's never come to Blu-ray. It's one of those things that I think it might've been like edited on tape. So I don't know if there can ever be like a Blu-ray of this one. But this is like one of those really underrated Stephen King ones that you really don't hear about that often. And I always really, really like this one. Uh, if you guys have not seen this one, this is one that's definitely worth checking out. They have 911 season one here. And that wasn't bad. I watched that. I watched a couple episodes of the first season of that. I haven't seen any of the second season. I believe there's like a spin-off series they did too of that one. Like I said though, just seeing if there's anything else different in here today because like I said it's been a very long time little Prince thing down there Carmen Electra half baked you know just keep going through all these ones here Christine Tommy boy at least you can see this stuff pretty well in here today and pretty much everything is new to see because I have not seen anything in here forever Let's see shop girl but I have sanitized in the car, so right the second I leave, I'm going to sanitize my hands. I'm doing this all in one take, too, so I don't have to touch, I don't touch my phone again and again. I just do it all. That's kind of how I do everything now. If I go on any type of thrift stores or anything, I just do it all in one take, even the Dollar Trees. I just do it like that, so then I don't touch my hands a lot, and I just go right outside and then um, sanitize them. Not seeing a lot of there are there some Blu-rays down here. We'll see what they have Blu-ray wise. Driving lessons. I remember seeing this back when this first came out and kind of liking this movie with um, Rupert Grint from the Harry Potter movies. What about Bob here? This is like one of those movies. I've watched this movie so many times. Like absolutely love that movie. Let's see, 
anything else in here. Upside of Anger, Shrek, Eye in the Sun, Envy. So here's some of the Blu-rays. There are some games here. They're even in the Wrinkle of Time, three dollars. Billy Lynn's Halftime. So it's not bad for a 4K, four dollars. I like that movie. Dragon Tales 3D. What's this thing here? Secret. I don't know that one. Frozen. Breaking Bad. Here's for real. Video games. Some more games. I'll show you guys outside though if I find out anything differently because I got a couple more things down here to look at. So I'll let you know if I find anything in here. Yeah, so I looked through all those ones in there and I looked on the ones at the bottom as well and didn't see anything else in there. Interesting though, like I said, it's been a really long time since I was in there, but didn't see anything like rare or really different or anything like that. But I really looked real well, but looked really quickly though. Pretty much what you saw in the video was I just went in, looked down there and then looked in the bottom part real fast and got out. But it was cool to go back in there again. I'll probably go in there every so often again, like every month or two, something like that. Just because I, I did like going in that place and it's been such a long time. Luckily enough, it's not like super, super crazy busy and stuff. But now, see where we head to next. Into Best Buy we go. Now, fingers crossed, hopefully they have something new out in here. Like I said, I think it's only going to be Honest Thief, but hopefully we can see it somewhere in person today. We'll see, though. When I looked online, because I wanted to check, and it said in-store, so we'll see if they've got it, though. But we'll head back there and see. So let's see. Well, usually, let's see. I'm looking in the section. I, I, I went totally did it the wrong way. I went here first. But looking here though, I do see some new stuff. Uh, I see one new thing in here. And I'll be talking about this one at the end of this video. For some reason though, I thought that this was next Tuesday. Maybe I'm, I'm totally wrong about that. I will have a review of this one at the end of this video, but this is a really cool movie. Uh, this was directed by Bria Grant and has Angela um, Bates in it, you know, Bates who was in the movie May, which is a movie I absolutely love. But for some reason, I thought that this was next Tuesday. Maybe I'm totally wrong about it or it was out earlier in Best Buy. Sometimes Best Buy gets some stuff like I've seen like once or twice like a week or so early, but I have to check. I, I don't know for sure because for some reason, like I said, I thought that that was next week, but maybe I'm totally mis mix mixed up with the date for that. Uh, but other than that, though, I'm checking the actual section here. Let me see if there's anything else different in here, like Dark and Wicked. These ones were all uh, last week. I'm still waiting, though, for a copy of um, a re copy of Craft Legacy, so I will be checking out soon for sure, though, because I definitely really want to see that one. It went up in price, though. That's one thing that happens with, with movies. If you guys look, certain movies, they start at like 19. The following week, they end up going up like $5 more. Let's see, though. These ones here are all empty. I think these are just like Godfather Part 2 to see if there's anything else in here. They still have the Chernobyl steelbook down there. Uh, so that's cool, they still have that one left in here. Other than that though, let's just check to make sure there's nothing else mixed in in here and then check in the other spot where they would have the newer things. So let's see. Yeah, other than that though, I don't see anything else. They have a bunch of uh, steelbooks in here and, they, and, and sometimes they randomly get in some older ones like older steelbooks mixed back in that they kind of get back in stock and stuff. But let's take a look though over here. And luckily enough, there's no music or anything. But yes, finally we've gone somewhere and seen Honest Thief in person. So I also, now I have something to hold in my thumbnail because I didn't even take a thumbnail picture. I'm like, what am I going to have, you know, have to hold and, and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, you know, Honest Thief is in here. Other than that though, these all the other things here are from the past couple weeks. They still have some of the Mulan. Uh, steelbooks left in here actually a bunch of them left still and you never know what Disney because certain Disney ones can go so fast and then other ones they end up having in here for a while there's some stuff on sale back in here like Call of the Wild 4k $17.99 Doolittle $14.99 yeah but other than that though that seems to be all the major stuff they still have the Christmas stuff which I definitely have to switch this stuff out soon so just check just to make sure there's nothing else over here yeah, I showed all these last and these are just kind of random ones here that were like $5 and $4.99, like Hellfest, $4.99, Dodgeball, some older ones, Mrs. Doubtfire for $5.99. This is kind of funny. This is like randomly up here, the uh, real Ghostbusters. It's like a different edition here, like a thinner case 
that had, I feel like it might have had a slip cover, but maybe I'm wrong. I have the old original release of this, if you guys remember from Time Life. It was in like the Ghostbusters house. I remember like um, ordering that years and years ago. But like I said, other than that though, don't see anything else in here different though. Yeah, so I just looked on, um, you know, Best Buy's website and everything. And, and yeah, the 12-hour um, shift one doesn't come out till um, next Tuesday. That's what I thought. Because like, when I do reviews, I usually show stuff like at the tops like a week or two early. So I thought that it was like a week early is what I thought. So yeah, it doesn't come out until uh, next Tuesday. So really, really cool movie. Really love that one. Uh, but with Best Buy, though, if a movie does get put out on shelves early... Um, usually it ends up like pinging at the register so then it says not for sale yet and it won't let you buy it so I don't know like let me know though in the comments below though if you guys went to your location and it ended up being out early and it ended up bringing up and you were able to get it or not I'm just I'm kind of curious but I feel like they might have just put it out by mistake that's all I can guess because I don't think, like I said, looking at Best Buy's website, it says next Tuesday. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this uh, DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. And like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, uh, definitely give this video a uh, thumbs up. Uh, also, too, let me know in the comments below, though, what you guys picked up on DVD Blu-ray or 4K today, if you guys ended up picking up anything uh, new today. Also, too, let me know anything new that you guys have been watching on streaming lately or any new uh, TV shows you guys have been watching. I, I did end up watching, you know... Um, Wonder Woman 84 off of uh, HBO Max. And if you guys have uh, regular HBO, if you subscribe to it, you can get HBO Max for free. You just kind of have to do it like through, I had to do it through like the cable provider and then I was able to set it up. So if you have it through your cable company, uh, but it's, you know, it's pretty good because they're going to be putting like all the Warner Brothers stuff on there. But when it comes to Wonder Woman 84 though, you know, the reviews for it have been pretty mixed. Like, I loved the first movie, like I thought it was such a great movie. Probably one of the, the best superhero movies in a long time, I thought. Like I really thought it was really well done. But the new one though, the, the problem with the new one though was some of the stuff with the story wasn't amazing. And then like some of like the CGI and stuff in a couple of scenes was kind of weird. Like it kind of like, especially some of the stuff at the end, it wasn't great. Like that was the only thing that like took away from it was some of the CGI and just kind of some of what was happening. And there wasn't as much Wonder Woman as like you would have expected in a weird way, like with the actual Wonder Woman kind of character in, in her wardrobe and like fighting and stuff. Like, I don't know, it just wasn't as much as the first movie. It was still okay. It's still worth checking out. Uh, but if you guys did sh see Wonder Woman 84 though, let me know what you guys thought of it. Like I said, let me know anything else new that you guys have watched on streaming or any movies or anything like that. I, I still have to watch uh, Soul, which is up on uh, Disney Plus. So I have to check that one out uh, soon uh, as well. Also too, let me know what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen them, what you thought of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though guys, thanks so much for watching and subscribing and now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Paramount and this is the 4K Ultra HD edition which includes the 4K, the Blu-ray and the digital copy of the film Love and Monsters. Uh, this one here stars uh, Dylan O'Brien from the, uh, you know, who is uh, best known from the Maze Runner films. Uh, he's been in a whole bunch of different stuff but I always think of him from the Maze Runner films. Uh, this one though, I really like this one a lot. This is one I would give a top recommendation to. You guys have got to check this one out. Uh, this one though is basically though it's a post-apocalyptic film and like in the beginning of the movie you find out that there was like something that was going to crash into earth i think it was like a planet or an, or an asteroid or something like that that was going to crash into earth and basically would have destroyed the earth so like the scientists and the government and everything was sending all these rockets and these kind of explosives and stuff up to break up the comet and the, or the asteroid so it, before it would crash into earth so basically they were like just basically shooting everything they could up at this and you know to try and break the this thing up and it ended up you know working but what ended up happening though was since this stuff that they were you know you know these rockets and stuff like that were like kind of experimental and it ended up you know any crashing back to earth like the remnants of this and ended up you know t turning everything except for humans into these mutated versions so like little like ants would would grow from the stuff that crashed down to these huge sizes like um you know uh like a rat or a mouse or something would grow like to like the size 
size of like a car, you know, like everything was basically mutated and changing around and everything. And because of that, though, even though that they saved the Earth uh, from the asteroid or the meteor thing that was going to crash into the planet, it ended up, you know, causing all these mutations. So basically these these creatures and stuff like that, mutated versions of things, of frogs and everything, destroyed the planet. And there's only a small amount of survivors. And uh, in the beginning of the movie, though, it fo focuses on, on Dylan O'Brien's character and his girlfriend. And this right when everything had happened and they ended up like breaking up and they were, you know, breaking off into different directions. And the girlfriend ended up going to a bunker with her family and he ended up going to a bunker with her, you know, with his family. And basically, though, it cuts to in the very beginning of this movie, this all happens in the first 10 minutes of the film. It's cuts to five years later. And, you know, he's now in this bunker by himself in there. And then, you know, um, you know, and, and his girlfriend is in another bunker, and it's basically he has just figured out, you know, where she is, tracked down her after five years of, you know, you know, going on the radio, contacting every one of the um, bunkers nearby that people are living in, and you know, trying to track down, you know, where she is, and of course, like he, like I said, he finally tracks it down, and it's now he, you know, wants to leave his bunker, you know, because he ha doesn't have anyone there, you know, he has like friends there, but you know, his girlfriend's not there, and everyone else there has a, you know, a significant other. And he basically is like, you know what? I finally tracked down where she is. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find her. And everyone in the bunker is like, oh, why? You can't go out there. You're not, you're not going to survive. You don't know how to defend yourself properly. So it's basically, though, him going on this mission to, you know, go. I think it was like, I think it was 80 something, 80, you know, 85 miles he has to go to try and track down his girlfriend and get to where she is. And it's kind of about the characters he comes across along the way, like Michael Rooker's, Michael Rooker's character and his daughter. And it's just a really, really great movie, though. And it's like him out there kind of having to survive against these, you know, gigantic mutated creatures and stuff like that. Mutated like frogs. Like I said, everything you can imagine is mutated and huge. It was just a really, really fun movie. Uh, 4K wise, though, this one looks great here on 4K. Really great, you know, um, like the one thing with 4K that I talk about a lot is the HDR, which is the high dynamic range, which is basically the contrast levels. It has much, much deeper, le deeper levers to the contrast to the darkness levels and all that kind of stuff. It's also just a much more vibrant picture all around as well. And on here, though, on the um, 4K disc, it has the movie. And then on the Blu-ray disc, it has the, the film as well. And it also has the special features and it has deleted scenes, uh, some featurettes on there as well about, you know, creating the post-apocalyptic landscape. But one I would definitely recommend you guys check out. The next one here is from Universal. This is the new film which stars Liam Neeson called Honest Thief. And this one was a pretty cool movie. It's basically, though, about you know Liam Neeson's character who was this guy who was going around and robbing these banks. And he kind of had, like... You know, there was they never had tracked down and figured out who it was, and he was he was going around for years robbing all these different banks through you know around, and kind of like never really you know the police never were able to track him down or anything, and he's decided now you know he's now you know seeing this woman that he's been seeing for a while now, and he's getting really serious with her, and he's getting ready to get married, and and he doesn't want to not tell her about what he's done, and he want you know he he feels really bad about what he's done, so basically what he ends up doing is he decides that he's going to turn himself into the cops. Even though the cops would not have probably found him, he decides that he wants to come clean. He doesn't want this over his head anymore, that he had done this. So basically he ends up calling the, the police and telling them that he wants to you know, come clean, and then he, they, you know, he's planning them to come and talk to him, and he's going to tell them and everything, and they're kind of talking to him on the phone, re being real dismissive, and go, like, kind of, like, acting like, you know, he's not really this guy, because this guy's kind of famous for this, you know, you know, because he's never been found, and also, too, they continuously get calls from people saying that they're this guy, and people pr basically pretend to be Liam Neeson's character, saying, yeah, I'm the guy that robbed the bank, you know, just, you know, kind of to get attention, so they're kind of not really, you know, believing him. Of course, though two of the cops there they'll come to talk to him and you know they go and like investigate his story and it's kind of like these these bad cops and kind of what they do and what they do when they find out about the money and stuff like that and it becomes this whole big situation of Liam Neeson like having to go and like kind of it's basically like I said I don't want to say anything more with you know ruin anything with the story but it's basically though it just becomes a total nightmare of a situation and things just continuously get worse and worse and worse in this one but really pretty cool movie here like I said this one here is called Honest Thief, which stars Liam Neeson. Uh, the next one's here. These ones are all from uh, Kino Larber. And this one, this is a movie which I saw 
like as a little kid, I think I must have saw it on, I think it was probably on, I believe this was a USA original movie, uh, for, you know, TV movie for USA, and I believe I saw this one like when I, either on VHS or I saw it on USA as a little kid, uh, but it's a movie here that stars Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, you know, Tim Matheson, and, um, you know, William Atter Atter Atherton, um, you know, who was from um, Ghostbusters and a whole lot of different stuff, and it's a movie here called Buried Alive, which is directed by, um, you know, Frank Darabont, and I believe this was the first feature that Frank Darabont, Darabont directed, you know, who went on to direct Shawshank Redemption and The Mist. Uh, always does a great work. I always love his films. But this movie is amazing. Like, this movie, like I said, I remember seeing this one as a little kid and I have not seen this one since. And it is so good. There's some amazing sequences in here. And it's basically, though, about uh, Jennifer Jason Lee's character, you know, who is, um, you know, married to Tim Matheson. And basically, though, like, she's kind of like, I don't know, he's like really, you know, you know, she just kind of is like, doesn't really like him and stuff. And she's kind of like cheating on him with, um, you know, uh, William Atherton's character and kind of she's cheating on him. And basically, though, you know, she wants to get rid of him and she's kind of figuring out exa how exactly she's going to do it. And like, he kind of like, um, William Atherton's character gives her this vial uh, of this, like, take, basically taken from this fish, where it's one of those kind of fish where if you don't prepare it right, you can basically die. You have to basically remove certain things from the fish or it's toxic. And he ends up extracting this stuff and gives it to her and say, listen, put this in his drink and he'll die and then we can get rid of him and then we can get in, you know, move in together and, you know, we'll like sell his business and we'll get this money and all these kind of things. And basically though, she goes and, you know, decides to put this in his drink and he ends up, you know, dying or so he thinks. And it's basically what ends up happening is, you know, it kind of like paralyzes him and it's kind of like, you know, he ends up getting buried paralyzed and it's kind of what ends up happening from there. And it's one of those things where it just kind of goes crazy but it is such a great movie and it has like these interesting like the end of this movie is amazing the last like 30 minutes are so cool it goes in this really interesting direction uh, and they actually made a sequel to this movie as well hopefully the sequel will come out uh, to Blu-ray down the line as well like I, I didn't even know about a sequel because I was just when I was looking this up I realized that I saw they made a sequel I think like seven years later or something uh, but there's, a, there's another TV movie too that I keep on hoping one day will come out and I feel like it was around the same time I don't know if any of you guys remember what it was it's one of those ones I can never remember the name and it had a woman in it that was kind of like a Suzanne Somers kind of woman and she takes like her stepson out swimming and he, and the stepson ends up like drowning in the lake and she covers it up and stuff that's one of those ones around the same time if any of you guys remember it let me know I totally blanked on that movie uh, and I never can remember the name but this movie is an absolute must watch this is like so interesting like I said it, it goes in these crazy directions has great music it is shot so well and, but on here though it has a commentary track on here with entertainment journalist and author Brian Ressman has an interview on hack, uh, with uh, actor William Atherton, uh, newly commissioned art by Vince Evans, as well as trailers on this one. But one, like I said, you guys have got to check this one out here. It looks great here on Blu-ray. Uh, like I said, really, really interesting movie. And the next one I got here is from Kino Larber as well. It's a movie here called Tentoria, a Tiger Shark. And this is a movie with, from 1978, which stars uh, Susan George, you know, who was from uh, the original Straw Dogs. And she was in tons of different movies. And this one, though, this was made, like I said, in 78. It was kind of around the time, you know, right after after Jaws had come out and they were doing a lot of movies kind of like Jaws. This one isn't exactly like Jaws. It's a little different though story-wise, but it has a similar kind of idea. And there's like a guy in it that's like like the main guy is kind of like a Richard Dreyfuss kind of guy. Like he kind of even has like the look that he did Richard Dreyfuss did in Jaws. And it's basically though about that guy, you know, who is basically his character though, he's on this boat and he has like an assistant guy and he's kind of goes around and he kind of catches tiger sharks and he to you know to you know know to sell for their meat and stuff like that so it's basically him and like he's on this island and he meets this other guy on the island who's kind of like the guy who's like the Don Juan kind of guy of, the, of this island where, where nearby where he's fishing for these sharks and he meets this guy because he's like the guy likes
likes this one girl that he likes and then like they both the guys kind of become friends and start kind of hunting the sharks together and then they end up you know meeting Susan George's character and it's like this weird like strange love triangle that they both like her and she likes both of them it's like this whole weird thing about them and then they're like catching the sharks and stuff like that the only thing about this movie though is uh keep in mind though and it even for me like I was like doing this a couple times because I, I didn't you know not a big fan of watching that kind of stuff there is there's stuff in here though when they're hunting the sharks and it's like real footage of sharks so like keep that in mind like to, like I said and I was doing that a lot it was like a little like it was kind of hard to watch some of the stuff with the sharks because it was like I said real footage of the sharks and stuff like that it's like this kind of movie would never be made now like not in a million years it would be all digital or it would have been like just you know uh, special effects or they would have made fake sharks and stuff like that for what they were doing because like I said they were spearing the sharks I, like I said it was just you know if you take that stuff out of it though it was an interesting movie that that there was just that stuff was just hard to watch uh, but on here though it has a commentary track on here with Troy Harworth and uh, Rod Barrett it also has the original theatrical trailer on here but a pretty cool movie if you, like I said it, it's done around the time as Jaws so then they're making a lot of kind of Jaws type movies uh, the next one uh, picture quality though looks great here on Blu-ray uh, the next one from Kino Larber as well and this is the um, the complete collection here this is Buck Rogers in the 25th century the complete collection this is a really fun show uh, like and I had I remember like had heard about this show a lot in the past I remember like seeing you know people from this like um Aaron Gray and stuff like that at conventions throughout the years uh but I had never seen an episode so I finally got to check this out it's a, a really really fun show it's basically though about the character of Buck Rogers who ends up getting frozen in space like something ends up happening and there's like a leak in his spaceship and he ends up freezing and he gets like in su suspended in animation and then he's like up there for I don't remember how many years but it's like a whole I think it's 500 years like he's like and then he ends up waking up getting awoken you you know 500 years later and it's kind of him to you know discovering how different things are and it's kind of like he sort of teams up with the one character and he's kind of going on like missions and stuff like that about the bad people in space and stuff like that it's that's essentially what it is uh it's it when you look at this movie though it kind of in the, in the series though you can see it, it kind of inspired the vibe a little bit to like stuff like guardians of the galaxy i feel like it had it's similar kind of vibe like i feel like this kind of had inspirations to guardians of the galaxy but what's cool about the show too is it has lots of different guest stars so it had people in here like you know um you know uh, uh sid haig was in here and a whole bunch of different people william smith and a whole lot of different like Mary Warnarv, you know, just a whole bunch of character actors and stuff like that from the 70s and stuff and, and early 80s and stuff, you know, were on here. Uh, but on here, feature-wise, though, it has a com uh, commentaries for 10 select episodes on here by film and TV historian Patrick Jen uh, Jackie Jackowitz, author of Buck Rogers in the 25th uh, Century, a TV companion. Has commentary by film historians T Steve Mitchell and Nathaniel Thompson on the theatrical feature. Has an interview with uh, star Aaron Gray, interview with actor... Uh, Tom Kristoff, uh, nine-minute uh, special theatrical preview, uh, theatrical trailers, t uh, two radio spots on here. But in here, though, it has, you know, season one here, and then it has season two. And then here's a look, though, at the back here for these ones. And then season one, that is a... Um, is a five disc set here and then season two that one is a um it, this one here is a let's see how many discs was season two was um i think i yeah it's it's, it's funny i got confused for a minute because it's a in it's in a case that has uh th four spots but it is a three it's three discs so on the back it says three discs so for a second i got i got confused i was like did I, did I have the one in the player still but also though in here though it has buck rogers 25th century the theatrical feature so basically i think they changed a few different things to it but it's the pilot movie that's an hour and a half long pilot movie and it's you know in widescreen so this was when they played this in theater so the theatrical version of it and on here though it has a commentary track on here as i was mentioning the nine minute special theatrical preview two radio spots and a theatrical trailer but picture quality as well these ones look great here but a really fun show and buck rogers too he goes around with this kind of like little alien and like i mean not a little alien like a little robot and then like the robot has this thing that it wears that kind of like is like this talking device so it's kind of like a robot and then this talking device is like like, like this smart device but the robot though is always like doing these weird noises and he's like meow, 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 meow. and I, it's like it's really weird and it's like when you watch the show every time you hear the robot do that you kind of almost 
almost like imitate it because it's like the the weirdest robot noise ever. I'm telling you, it's like this. <laughs> it's really, really strange. But it's a fun show, though. The next one here is from a Screen Media. And it's a movie here called Girl, which stars Bella Thorne. It stars Bella Thorne. And then um, it has in here uh, Mickey Rourke. And it's directed by Chad Faust. And Chad Faust uh, stars in the movie as well. He did a really good job in here. Uh, this movie, though, is basically though about Bella, Bella Thorne's character who is going back to uh, uh, this small town, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, to, to see her father. Because she finally has tracked down where her father is. And, like, the father, like you know, did like something terrible to her mother. And basically the father has been gone from her life since she was six years old. He just vanished. And like the mother is like, you know, her back is all messed up because of something that the father had done to her. And basically though, Bella Thorne is just, her character is so tired of all this and she wants to go and get revenge on her father. So she's basically, since she's figured out where he is in this small town, she's going back there with, you know, the, the plan to kill him. And, you know, of course she goes there, after, goes to this small town. And right when she gets to the small town, she meets the sheriff who's played by Mickey Rourke and he's just kind of acting really strange he's like kind of bothering her and like kind of it's just kind of being a little weird and, th and then he goes you know uh, Bella Thorne's character goes to where her father lives goes to the farm and then she finds her father and he's like all tied up and he's dead so she's like well so, you know it's kind of confused because she's like someone beat me to this you know what I mean like what exactly has happened here how my father's already dead and now right when you know when this has happened though She's kind of in this town, and it's kind of already happened, and she's realized, though, somebody has killed her father, and now, you know, they're kind of coming after her, and it's like this whole thing, and it's got a lot of twists and stuff in here, but it is a really, really cool movie. Rick, Mickey uh, Rourke, though, he did a great job in here. Like, he he's great, and I thought Bella Thorne did a really, really good job in here as well, and it's it, it goes in, like I said, this whole kind of, like... Um, like revenge kind of aspect as well like but a really really cool movie this is one i would highly recommend you guys check out and if you guys have checked it you know seen this one too let me know what you guys thought the other one here uh from screen media is one i wanted you guys to know was available and this is a documentary here on lennox lewis and this is the untold story this is a documentary you know talking all about lennox lewis you know who was the um heavyweight you know three-time uh, heavyweight um boxing champion it's kind of just talking all about his life and talking about people that he had you know had fought in the matches throughout the years and all that kind of stuff but like I said I just want to let you guys know that this one was available this is a documentary here called Lennox Lewis The Untold Story here uh, the next one here uh, these ones are all from um, moviezing.com and I have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price and this one here is also from Sony and this is a movie which stars Richard, Drankin, uh, Richard Jenkins and Ed O'Neill and Shane um, uh, Paul McGee and it's a movie called The Last Shift this movie though was amazing I absolutely love this movie Richard Jenkins though is always great like he's an amazing character actor you know he played the father and stepbrothers but he's been in lots and lots of movies throughout the years and of course ed o'neill who's always great ed o'neill you know of course is um al bundy and he's real al bundy-ish in this one too which i like he's like a real al bundy kind of guy and it's basically though about richard jenkins character and he works at this fast food establishment this fast food restaurant he's been there for like i think it was 38 years and he's getting to the point now where he's decided that he's going to finally leave his mother is in a nursing home and he wants to go and see his mother and he doesn't he doesn't like that his mother's living in this nursing home you know because he feels like she's being mistreated there and he wants to live with her so he's basically decided that he's going to leave now after 38 years and he's going to end up driving and moving in with his you know getting a place with his mother so he can take care of her so basically, because he's leaving, uh, a new person comes in, and he has to train the person. It's this kid who comes in, uh, and it's basically him training this kid. And the kid is kind of doesn't really take the job too serious, and isn't really super interested in doing this. And and it's just it's basically though it's just like kind of like following around this this you know couple days of him working there, training this kid, getting ready to leave. But it's like kind of like you know. It, it, it takes some interesting turns, though, with what ends up happening here. And it's a, it's a really, really good movie. It's a character piece movie, and it's just so well done. And I don't know. It, it's one you guys have totally got to check out. It's an absolute must-watch here. Another one, if you guys have seen this one, let me know what you guys thought of this. And the next one I got here is from MovieZing.com as well. And this is also from uh, 20th Century Fox. And this is the show which stars Christian Ritter, uh, Don't Trust the Bee, in Apartment 23. And this is the complete series here. Uh, this show ran for uh, two seasons here. And this was from 
ran from 2012 to 2013. This also has uh, James Vanderbeek in here playing like a version of himself. And this is a show that I totally missed watching this one when it was on. Like I remember like seeing the ads for it and everything, but it's actually a fun show. It's Kristen Ritter and like she like, you know, is in this apartment and she always has like people who come on there and be like her roommates and she kind of like likes to kind of mess with them and kind of like likes to kind of make them miserable so they end up leaving and stuff like that. So it's basically about her and then the one person who's her roommate that she's trying to get rid of and they have like disagreements with each other and all that kind of stuff and uh, you know Kristen Ritter's character you know she also like you know was, was friends with James Vanderbeek and they had like this kind of relationship like and like I said he's playing like a kind of a wacky over the top version of himself in here but it's a really fun show and I get this one ran like I said for two seasons here and this one here is a um you know, a four uh, disc set here. The next one here is from uh, MovieZing.com as well. And this one here is also from the Warner Archive. And this is a movie which stars Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep. And Albert Brooks, you know, directed and wrote and directed this film as well. And it's a movie here called Defending Your Life. And this is one that I always love this movie. This is a really great, really underrated movie that you don't hear about as much. Uh, the other movie that Albert Brooks directed is uh, Mother, which is one I absolutely love as well. And this one, though, is basically, though, about, Albert, you know, Albert Brooks' character Die ends up going to heaven and it's kind of like an interesting take on the whole thing because it's like um about like the idea that you have lots of different lives and like you live these different lives and everything and basically though when he gets to heaven he comes to find you know he meets Meryl Streep's character who he starts to like her in, in there and it's kind of he comes to find out though about like how you know you can when you go to like this one building you can kind of see your past lives and you can kind of see the kind of lives that you lived in the past and who you were and like if you were like a caveman or a political figure or some like scientist and all these kind of things and you know, he finds out that his, like, what his, you know, past was. and But basically, though, the story of this is you either move on um, to heaven uh, or you go and live your life again. And you have another life if your life was not very good. And it's kind of like they're both there kind of coming to find out if they're going to be going on to heaven or they're going to be going and, you know, having another life again. It's an interesting movie with an interesting concept and everything. But I love this movie. It's a really fun movie. I've watched this movie a lot throughout the years. Like I said, if you guys have never seen this one, this is one you guys should definitely check out. Uh, the next one here, this is from, um, from Magnolia. And this is from their Magnet line. This is a movie which uh, stars... Um, you know, um, Angela Bates, who was from uh, the movie May, which I absolutely love that movie. Uh, Bria Grant uh, directed this film. It's a movie here called 12 Hour Shift. This one I just finished watching now. This also has in here, too, um, uh, you know, uh, Mick Foley's in the movie uh, and uh, David Arquette's in the film. Uh, David Arquette's wife was also the producer on this film as well. And this is a movie, though, it's basically, though, about Angela Bates' character who, you know, works at this hospital. She's going on for this, you know, her shift. And basically, though, she has this whole racket t thing going on with her and another nurse where she's, you know, she's basically taking people's organs and then selling them. And then like her cousin kind of goes and picks up the organs from there and then takes them to the people that need the or that are, you know, you know, you know, doing the organs and like transporting them and getting the money for them and everything and, and Mick Foley's character is in charge of like the organs and like selling them and getting the money and all that kind of stuff and basically though uh, Angela Bates character's cousin is in transporting the newest organs that they need and she accidentally forgets the organs there and it becomes this you know and accidentally leaves them out front of the hospital so when she gets there and Mick Foley's like where are the organs where are they I need this kidney this guy needs the transplant now and everything and she's like oh I don't know I must have left them back there so she goes back to the hospital and it becomes this whole nightmare of a situation about how to get an organ, what they're going to do, and this whole big thing. And it's kind of like all set at the one night in the hospital where things get worse and worse. And David Arquette's character, his character is a prisoner who's in, in you know, there because he tried to, to, you know, tried to take his own life. So he's like there. And you follow around different people and it's kind of like just what goes on there and what they're, how they're going to try and replace this organ and everything. It's a, it's a cool movie though. I thought, and I also like the music in here. The whole vibe of this movie, it has this real tense aspect and it just kind of feel like it just gets worse and worse as this goes along with what's going on for everybody. But on here though, feature-wise, it has a behind-the- scenes photo gallery but really really cool movie and Bria Grant did a great job uh, directing this one uh, the next ones here these are all from Gravitas Ventures and this first one here is a movie here called uh, Shortcut and this is about a group of um 
you know, friends who were going on like, no, it wasn't friends. They were like a, a school, uh, like field trip that's going out and they kind of are driving in the, through the middle of the woods. They're kind of going out in the middle of nowhere and they end up going like this weird back way. And when they get in the back way though, they end up like getting flagged down by this car and like this criminal guy ends up coming aboard the bus like this crazed range criminal guy but basically what ends up happening though is there's something weird like out in the woods like some kind of a creature out there so basically though they have this bad criminal guy and at the same time there's a creature out in the woods so these students and stuff like that these kids are trying to figure out exactly how they're going to survive what they're going to do and everything like that and it's just like it's one of those things where the night just gets worse and worse as it goes along but it's a pretty cool movie here like I said this one here is called Shortcut the other one here is one I really liked from Groucho's Ventures and it's a movie called uh, called Getaway. And this is basically, though, about like, um, you know, if you guys know me, I always love movies that deal with making movies and that kind of stuff. And this is basically, though, about a group of these students, these film students who are going to be putting together this uh, school project, this horror film they're going to be putting together. And like the one girl they end up casting in the role and everything, uh, you know, and, and ba basically they end up going out to kind of like this cabin out in the middle of the woods that the one family owns to shoot this movie. And as soon as they get out there, though, it's kind of like somebody is out there trying to kill them. And it's kind of like they're trying to make this movie at the same time somebody's killing you know, trying to make a slasher movie at the same time somebody's out there killing them off one by one so it's basically them out there trying to figure out exactly who is the person who is involved in this whole thing you know who is killing them off and trying to survive and you know because there's not like no service out there no phone service or anything so it's basically like they're trapped out there and it's one of those movies too when they kind of like hint at like who it could be and like then you know the, by showing certain characters and you go oh could it be this person could it be that person but on here though the feature wise this has behind the mask uh, an on set featurette on here and the other one from Groucho's Ventures is a movie here called uh, Boys vs. Girls. This is a fun movie. This is like a crazy over-the-top movie. This is set in 1990. And it's kind of like... um has vibes and stuff like meatballs and those kind of like summer camp kind of movies. But it's basically, though, about like um, this camp where it's like, you know, uh, it normally would be like a boys camp and then a girls camp. And I think it was like in July would be the boys camp. August would be the girls camp. But because of things have changed at the camp, they've like decided to make it be a co-ed camp. So now the counselors have to work together because normally it would be just girl counselors and boy counselors and then the girls campers and, and, boy, and boy campers that would work together. So it would be the girls with the girl campers, the boys with the girl, uh, the, the boys with the boy campers. I mean, the boy, see, uh, the boy counselors with the girl, uh, the, with the boy campers. You, you guys know what I mean. Like, it was basically a boys camp and a girls camp, but they decided to make it be a co ed camp. So now these counselors have to all be together, and they don't, and it's kind of like this argument between them, and they have all these disagreements. So, like, the campers are having disagreements, and at the same time, the counselors are as well. Like I said, it has like these meatballs kind of vibe to it, where things are just like kind of all sorts of troubles and stuff, but uh, it's a very fun movie here. Uh, the other ones here, these ones are all from um, from Mill Creek, and there's some really cool uh, new releases here from Mill Creek. And the first three ones are all um, the ones that have the VHS style slip covers to them. And I really like these ones a lot. And what's cool too is they have like designs on the side too to look like the spines of VHS tapes. But the ones here though, the newest ones are like I said, it's three brand new ones from the VHS slip covers line. The first one here is the movie with Dudley Moore and Kirk Cameron Like Father, Like Son. This is a one of those swapping kind of roles movies where like um you know, Kirk Cameron ends up, you know, taking over his father's body, and then um, Dudley Moore takes over his son, and it's like an awkward thing of like them going, you know, Dudley Moore is now his son, you know, his takes his his soul goes into his son's body, and like it's like this awkwardness at school and all this kind of stuff. It's a fun movie though. I've always really liked this one. You don't hear about this one too much. And here's a look though at the inside as well. But like I said, what's with the VHS slipcovers, it has stuff on here that says like "Be Kind, Rewind" sticker up here. On here it says like the sticker for the movie. It says like the like if you were like at a video store, like the the tape number. And then on, on the side though, I was mentioning it has like the spine like a VHS tape. So it's really cool the way these are designed. The other one here is a movie with Sir Rucker Howard called "Blind Flur uh, Blind Fury." And on here it has be you know "Melt If This Is Left in the Sun" sticker right here. The spine uh, the sticker for the movie title and on here too it has like be kind rewind sticker and on the side here is look at the 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 side like the vhs tape and even on the back too it has like the vhs uh, look as well and the other one here is the merlin brando matthew broderick film here the freshman and on here too this one has on here heat sun um 
heat and sunlight damage tapes replacement if is customer's responsibility. A staff pick sticker right here. A PG sticker. And here's a look though at the side and the spine. But really, really cool. Like I said, I really love these VHS style uh, slipcover releases here. And the next one I got here is from Mill Creek as well. And this is one I'm so excited. It's finally on Blu-ray. I've always really, really loved this movie. It's a movie here called Accepted, which stars, uh, you know, um, uh, Justin Long, uh, Jonah Hill is in here, uh, Blake Lively. And this is basically, though, it kind of has vibes a little bit to the movie Camp Nowhere. It has that similar kind of story. But it's basically, though, instead of being like a summer camp, like these kids that don't want to go to the summer camps are supposed to go to, they end up creating their own fake summer camp where they can kind of spend the whole summer together. Well, this concept is about a group of these kids that couldn't get into any colleges. They kept getting turned down. So they come with their own with their ideas of creating their own college. So it's basically they put together this, their own college. They get this building. It's kind of this whole thing, but it ends up becoming like all these people end up enrolling in this college. It's one of those things where it's like get, things get really out of hand and they have to try and handle this whole situation. It's a really, really fun uh, movie. And, and, and Jonah Hill is great in here. And like, you know, he's wearing this like hot dog costume in one scene. And it's like, if you ever guys ever heard that line too, when people go, ask me about my wiener. That was from this movie when Jonah Hill's wearing the hot dog costume. But there's some really funny stuff in here. This is one you guys have got to watch. And I feel like it's really underrated. You do not hear about this one too much. On here, though, it has um, a whole bunch of different features. It has deleted scenes, gag reels, uh, making of, it has Easter eggs, commentary track on here, uh, campus tour on this one. And the other one here from um, Mill Creek as well, this is a movie which stars uh, Danny McBride, James Franco, and Natalie Portman called Your Highness. I had not seen this movie in years. Uh, this one came out, when did this one originally release? I, um... I think it was 2010 is when this one came out. And it, this one has on here the theatrical version and the unrated version. But it's basically, though, about these two, like, goofy knights that are trying to rescue this princess. And they, and they team up with Natalie Portman's character who helps them along the way. And it's kind of like this whole awkward thing with them. It's a really fun movie. Like I said, you don't hear about this one much either. But this one has on here, though, the theatrical version as well as the unrated version. It has deleted and alternate scenes. It has a gag reel, uh, the making of on here, as well as a featurette with video intro as well and the last one um the last one's here from mill creek this is the newest um ultraman here and this is uh number six of the ultra ultra brothers and this one here is um ultraman um uh you know ultraman uh taro here i'm gonna show you guys a closer look though inside this one yeah this is ultraman taro but in here though it had this is the steelbook edition i'll show you guys though a look inside and also has a digital copy of the show from um you know mill creek streaming service movie spree so that's in here as well but here's a look though inside at the discs and here's a look though at the back of the steelbook but also though it has in here a booklet it has stuff about the episode and episode guide booklet. It has like stuff about, about the, um, the characters in here, like character descriptions. It also shows you too a description of the um, the monsters and stuff like that that are in the episodes as well. So it has like an episode, you know, a guide on here for the monsters. Shows you all the different villains and stuff in the episodes. Like I said, though, just want you guys know that this one uh, was available uh, from Mill Creek. This is the brand new uh, newest Ultraman release, Ultraman Taro, and this really cool steel book edition here uh, the, and the last one from Mill Creek this one here is a four uh, movie collection this is the four comedy favorites uh, collection and this one has in here You, Me and Dupree uh, Because I Said So The Wedding Date and Head Over Heels in here and this one here is a two uh, disc set my favorite one in here is You, Me and Dupree I had not watched that movie in forever it's basically though about like uh, Kate Hudson and Matt Dillon's character and Owen Wilson is like the, um, the one uh, Matt Dillon's character's friend and he kind of ends up moving in. It's one of those things when he moves in and you're never going to get rid of him. He like he just like won't leave the house and it becomes this like nightmare. It's a, it's a fun movie. I, I, I really liked it back when I saw this years ago. I think it came out, yeah, 2006 is when it was from. But all these movies here are from like, um, uh, because I said so it was from 2006, uh, The Wedding Date was 2004, and Head Over Heels was uh, 2001. And then the last ones here, though, this one is from uh, PBS, and this is one I want to let you guys know is available. This is a uh, Garfield uh, movie, two movie collection here, and this is Garfield uh, Cartoon World here. Now, these are the. Um, you know, like the um, the CGI computer animated versions of Garfield. They did these movies. 
I can't remember when these were ones were originally from when these originally came out, but I remember these ones. They did two different ones here, and you know I always love Garfield. Uh, you know I've watched Garfield since I was a little kid. Like I said, just want you guys to know that these ones were available, and these are two different uh, Garfield movies. And it had, but the movies that are on here is um, Garfield's Fun Fest and Garfield uh, Gets Real. And then the last one here, this is from uh, the Film Detective. This is a movie here called Giant from an Un. Gi sorry, this is called Giant from the Unknown. This is the deluxe edition here, uh, res resurrected from the original uh, camera negative in a brand new 4K transfer. And this is a cr interesting movie. I, li I like. There's a great interview on here too, with the actor in here, with the main actors in here. Um, was it Gary? Was it Gary Crutcher? Um, yeah, Gary. Who? Yeah, I believe it was uh, Gary Crutcher. Yeah, and it's like him kind of talking about how he got the role in here and everything. But this is basically though about this gigantic, like giant creature. It, it's like a you know, wearing this big helmet, and he's from five thousand year old Spanish conquistador. And basically, though, he is like going around this small town and like killing people. He's come back to life and stuff like that. And it's like it's a it's a crazy kind of movie, one of those kind of like goofy, over the top films. But the transfer in here is great. Like they did such a great job cleaning up this movie. And I thought this was actually pretty cool. Um, and it has on here though, like I said, a commentary track on here with film historian Tom Weaver. It has a brand new interviews on here, like as I was mentioning, with Gary Crutcher, as well as film historian C. Courtney Johner. Has a um, commentary track on here with Gary. Crutcher uh, has a collectible booklet in here with liner notes by uh, Tom Weaver as well as a theatrical trailer. Here's a look though at the booklet in here. Here's a look though at the creature. But this is a pretty interesting movie. Uh, but anyway though guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. And like I always say, if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.